Darkness Falls is an overhaul mod that even vanilla 7 days to die veteran players will be thoroughly impressed with. Darkness Falls takes the game to new levels and I honestly find it very difficult to go back to playing the unmodded game as I find the gameplay so much more engaging, fun and challenging. Hi everyone and welcome. I love 7 Days to Die, but after a while as a veteran player you get a little bit bored of the vanilla game. And at first glance, this mod, Darkness Falls, it looks like 7 Days to Die, it sounds like 7 Days to Die and it certainly smells like 7 Days to Die. However, lurking under the carcass are many many changes that have given me many hours of fun. Darkness Falls is set up to draw out the early game, however, it also attempts to give players a challenge in the late game and this is what I've found. It keeps me challenged and wanting to continue to play the game and wanting to return. So what I've done is put together my top 10 features, my top 10 reasons for wanting to play Darkness Falls. These features help explain what the hell Darkness Falls is. If you're looking into the mod and you're looking into Darkness Falls and wondering if this mod is for you, hopefully this will give you some direction. Yes, boys and girls, Darkness Falls does actually have a story. Not a brilliant one, but it does have a story. Seven Days to Die is usually based around exploring, crushing zombies, building a base and surviving horde nights. Which, well, there's nothing wrong with that. Darkness Falls, on the other hand, you have a story that you can follow. It's not essential, though it does help you progress with going to the various points of interest. The missions with the traders also push your progress with better loot and skills, all of this helping you with the end game. You can even switch off horde nights, then set the zombie counts to very high and still have a really fun game. Switch off Horde Knight and Vanilla and if you're something like me, you get reasonably bored after a while. Darkness Falls brings in a horde of new monsters and variations of the zombies. Many of these are connected with the story and you will get to see them as you progress. However, they are generally based on your level, so Following the story or not is not really going to make any difference. As your level increases, you will get to see them. They will also appear a lot more often in certain areas. So my advice, stay out of the wasteland until you have progressed far enough so that you won't get yourself killed immediately. The catchphrase of this game is, they come out at night, and they certainly do in the wasteland. Let us also not forget our normal zombies. These zombies also have a demonic variation to them. As you progress high enough, you will start seeing the demonic versions, these mutated, fireball-throwing demonic zombies. This will also change the strategy when building a horde base, as now you also have to deal with splash damage from the demon fire. Finally, some demons will be able to regenerate health at an incredible rate. Shooting them, hitting them with traditional weapons, even two, three, four people will not be able to kill them. The only way to deal with them is unfortunately not a shotgun to the head, but through special weapons. Guns. Lots of guns. Yes, ladies and gents, besides the normal vanilla guns, we have lots of new guns. To help you take down all the new monsters, including a lot of the flying crap out there, big and small, we have all the usual seven days to die weapons, including bows, crossbows, rocket launchers, handguns, revolvers, shotguns, rifles, SMG, the M60, and a few added to the arsenal are the AR-15, M4A1, and Winchester repeater. Close combat and melee weapons are not to be forgotten. The usual array of clubs, machetes and hammers give those itching to bash in some zombie brains the edge. Need more firepower. After conventional weapons, 
Coil weapons help bridge the gap. The new, more powerful shotgun, pistol, rifle and sniper help give you that advantage when your AK-47 just feels like it is shooting blanks. The weapon system now gets even deeper, with the introduction of higher tier mining and crafting with titanium, plutonium and uranium, we can now have far superior weapons and armor. When you finally get to them, you can add laser and plasma to your arsenal. Laser weapons will give you that desperately needed ability to help stop the blasted demon regeneration. In Darkness Falls, there are eight classes to choose from. You are prompted to choose your class with the items you are given when you first enter the world. Each class comes with a quest line of about six or so quests. They're pretty easy to complete, but completing the quest line will give you a few free level skills in that particular class and sometimes a few free items. Once you have completed those basics, you can then work towards the mastery of that particular class. In Seven Days to Die, action skills were previously removed. In Seven Days to Die Vanilla, if you wanted to become proficient with the sledgehammer, all you need to do is throw a few skill points in that direction, and you can go from just hurting zombies to pummeling the crap out of them. Now, in Darkness Falls, action skills are back. You could have many excess points, but still, if you wanted to become proficient with the sledgehammer, you need to use it. You need to actually go out, bash zombies, use the weapon, and only then will you slowly but surely get good. There are a lot of plants, fruit and vegetables in Darkness Falls. If you are a budding farmer, baker or cook, you have many options. Generally in Seven Days to Die, the food system is not very deep. Yeah, you have many recipes to choose from, but why bother? Loot some tin food, make some bacon and eggs, and well, you set. However, with Darkness Falls, even tin food can make you ill if you are not careful. Understanding the food system and cooking has many rewards in Darkness Falls. Making different foods and drinks provides wellness for more health and gives you boosts similar to what cookie and candy items do in Seven Days to Die, especially as candy and cookies are not readily available in Darkness Falls. So if you want those boosts, now you need to make them and not just buy them. Making farms in this mod is a lot more useful now. In Darkness Falls, all crops require water. You either achieve this by digging water holes for a rain catcher or using pipes for irrigation. And eventually, you can even use grow lights to plant your crops into an underground base. Farming in Darkness Falls can cater for a large number of play styles and it actually feels like it is useful and not a waste of time anymore. Related to food and farming is the animal husbandry feature. Animals can breed and chickens lay eggs, and various animals can be kept in captivity. Currently Darkness Falls allows you to keep and breed boars, chickens, cows, goats, sheep and wolves. You need to set up the correct environment with food, water and enclosed area, otherwise they will wander all over the place. As long as you have healthy animals, they will breed on their own if you have a male and female nearby. Say hello, hamburger. I think we all know where you're ending up tonight. Books and die. Both items are intricate to how Darkness Falls operates and how you progress. Why do you have dye in the vanilla game of Seven Days to Die? Well, for the sake of coloring your armor, coloring your clothes or various items, that's it. However, in Darkness Falls, besides dyeing stuff, using dye for making ink and skill books takes yet another relatively waste of time item and makes it pretty useful. 
In Darkness Falls, you need dye, especially black dye. That is one of the great things I have found with this mod. Many minor items that are either of no use or relatively never ever used now have another reason to be used in the game. Books are used for advancing your classes and for perks. Also, once you don't need certain books anymore, you need to scrap them for skill notes so that later on you can now have more advanced technology crafting. So folks, get out there and become a bookworm. Your life depends on it. There are many more workbenches, forges and workplaces for crafting in Darkness Falls. With the introduction of titanium, plutonium and uranium, you now have a deep range of four forges. Your normal one that most people are used to, then there is the big forge, the advanced forge and finally the top tier fusion forge. For those wanting a bit more for the kitchen, there is a working mortar and pestle, which can be used for making seeds, cornmeal, flour, vegetable and fruit juices, and animal feed. Included for the kitchen is also a working oven and sink. There are also huge craftable cupboards. Just look at the amount of space that you have to be able to store things. There is the tailoring station, used for gear like your armor and clothing. The writing desk for skill, class and perk books. There is the metal workstation for your metal work. The laser workstation, which is one of those end game items that you are always striving to get eventually. Finally, there is the lathe. This is the gun crafting workstation which can only be discovered and found in loot. You cannot craft this item. Depending on your map, Darkness Falls comes pre-installed with custom points of interest. The Compo Pack, well known by many fans, is included with the mod and gives a lot of variety to the dead world. At the heart of Seven Days to Die is the core characteristic in that it is a survival game and that requires you to get off your butt and go out and explore. The Compo Pack brings with it scores of custom POIs. If you are tired of the few old buildings, Compo livens the world up with new residential housing, apartment complexes, schools, military buildings, farms, airports, industrial buildings, shops and malls. As much as some people do not always like the Compo Pack due to some unbalanced POIs, the majority seem to prefer it. The Darkness Falls mod team has also tried to be a bit more selective about which POIs are included with their maps and has also tried to do a bit of balancing. Exploration is fundamental and key to a successful playthrough of Seven Days to Die. So that is why I believe the Compo Pack makes life a lot more interesting and fun when playing Darkness Falls. In the final point of what the hell Darkness Falls is, I've added a few honorable mentions as there are just so many changes and features in Darkness Falls. Darkness Falls allows you to upgrade your cars and bikes by adding mods to them. For example, like making their fuel consumption more efficient, providing speed boosts, having more armor, or their headlights brighter. When new players open up their backpack, the first thing they see is the massive 96 slot backpack and 12 slot crafting and salvaging menu. A stroke of genius for all those wannabe explorers and hoarders. The sweet storage upgrade is all hidden behind various upgrades to your character including perks, larger levels of backpacks, tactical gear and clothing pockets. So you cannot just throw a few skill points in there and grab yourself a 96 slot backpack. 
Another thing that new players will find is the time of day is not naturally displayed on your interface. Either you need to talk to a trader, visit a vending machine, or eventually you can actually craft a wristwatch. Overall, this very minor feature actually brings a, a sense of suspense to the game, as you always have that gnawing feeling in the back of your mind, wondering when will darkness be falling. New traders have been added related to the story and as an alternative way of obtaining high-end powerful items later in the game. Finally, traders have guards. For many new players, this is a welcome feature to help them in the early game. In Darkness Falls, you can set up your base in a trader, so the trader guards can be quite a welcome security net for many players. However, this feature will likely be out of the mod once we get to Alpha 20. The game AR for guards has the intelligence of a goldfish, and unfortunately, they can be incredibly unpredictable and rather noisy. Sometimes they will continually shoot at some invisible zombie in a nearby house. Other times, they'll just ignore other zombies walking past the fence. So many players tend to get away from them as far as possible. Or, well, they'll just execute them. Well, that is it. What the hell is Darkness Falls? It is an overall mod for 7 Days to Die, and it makes significant changes that breathes new life into the game. It takes numerous features from previous game alphas and mixes them in with the new, turning 7 Days to Die into a better game. Well, at least in my opinion. New players can jump straight into it as well, though I would always recommend at least looking at the vanilla version first. Get to know it and make the leap into Darkness Falls at a later point. Though, of course, there's nothing stopping you from jumping in straight away. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.